Hi, I'm Callum from Town Valley Motorhomes and today's handover will be the Benamar Milo 202. So as we start the walk round on the outside of the vehicle, first side we're on is the driver's side, so here you've got your Truma vent cover. You don't need to take anything off, it's just to allow the fumes out from the water heater and boiler. So just make sure that is obstruction free at all times. And then here this indicates fresh water. So this is your fresh water filler. So this is where you get a hose pipe and you put the hose pipe in here and fill until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can't see on the main control panel. If you did want to drain it off, you have to get underneath the vehicle and you'll see a little green cap just there. You just basically twist the green cap off and the water will start flowing from through the floor. And that's how you drain it off if you're taking on contaminated water or you drain it down for the season. Then your little key here does all your locks. And if we just open this locker here, we've got some storage at the back there. And you can access this from the inside. And as you can see, you've got your ladder there for your bed. Full size spare wheel as the last customer has opted it with a full size spare wheel and this is your tool kit here so it's got a jack and a brace and a tow knife so it's got everything you need to change that wheel. You've also got a 12 volt plug and a 3 pin 240 plug as well as a light with a switch there. And then ne neatly next to it you do have your WC so your toilet and this is where your cassette lives. So first of all, make sure the blade on the toilet is closed, which enables you to get this cassette out. If not, it will simply won't move. Then you lift and slide it out. You do have a handle there, so once it's heavy and full, you can wheel it round the side. Take your cassette to your waste disposal point, which is normally behind or beside your toilet block, shower and block. You take the cap off. Sometimes it's orange, on this one it's blue. Take it off. You've got your waste disposal point and you press your blue button, again can be orange, press and tip. Once you've tipped it out, if you put a bit of water in there, and just give it a quick rinse. And then if you are using the liquid form of chemical, you'd fill this up. So it's got a measuring stick there, you'd fill it full, tip it into here, and it's ready to go back into the vehicle and be used. If you're using the new form of tablets, so should I say chemical, which is tablet, you'd put the water in the cassette and drop a tablet straight through the toilet by opening the blade. Do make sure you use special motorhome toilet paper as otherwise your normal household toilet paper will swell in the cassette and you'll struggle to empty it. Behind the driver's rear wheel is your waste indicator so your waste pipe is here so as you can see you've got a you can push and pull here and you drop your waste so Go to your waste point on the way out of your site, drive over it and open the waste. Again, you'll want to open this in the winter and leave no water within the vehicle. On the back of the van you do have your high level brake light, your reversing camera just up there and then you've got your bike rack bars here. So should you want to fit a bike rack, this is where the back panel has been strengthened to take the weight of a bike rack. You've got your two fridge vents. And then you've got your tow bar with 13 pin electrics, which has been fitted. On the passenger side of the vehicle, again, opens with the black key. You've got your LPG, so liquid petroleum gas. This is your gas locker. And in here you can fit two gas bottles. And what you need to do is you, to connect your pigtail to the bottle, it's a left hand thread, so opposite threads with being gas. Then you will nip it up with a spanner, so get an adjustable wrench or gas spanner, turn on and off at the top of the bottle. You'll also want to make sure that when the bottles are in place, they are strapped in with the straps provided. Turn it off when you're travelling and turn it on when you arrive on site, just to be safe. In here you've got your gas barbecue point so this is your outlet for your gas which runs off the bottle here so it saves you carrying an extra bottle for a barbecue so you get a gas fitting here which is called a spigot 
You need some orange gas hosing and some Jubilee clips to connect the spigot of the hose and the gas hose to your Kadak or external barbecue. And then you can turn on and off from here. You've also got in the bottom corner the blue one which is your external shower so the fitting just fits in there and it is a cold water feed only so it's great for if you've been on the beach with the dogs or the children you can hose them off next week you've got your mains connectivity points so this is where the 240 goes into the vehicle so what you need to do is you get your hookup lead lift it up there slide it on Connect the vehicle first, then walk to your power source and obviously do it in reverse when unhooking. And to unhook, there's a small blue lever in the left hand side there which you push down, enabling the lead to be pulled out. And on the front here, so as you can see, there's your carb carpets and your carpets for this vehicle. You've got storage underneath here, but the main point is you've got your 240 trips. So your RCD and MCBs, you've got your 12 volt blade fuses, so carry some spares, and you've got your charger unit there, which charges your leisure and habitation, leisure and engine battery, should I say, when you are hooked up, which is on. Coming to the front of the cab, so now how to fill up with diesel. So in here, you've got your diesel filler, opens with the main ignition key, Simply lockable fuel cap, fill with diesel, and then lock your fuel cap. And on the front, on the panel here, the slam panel, you've got your tyre pressures, which are five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI all round. Your main leisure battery lives underneath your seat, and your engine battery lives underneath the floor here. But should you need to access underneath the bonnet, your bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard there. So if we just have a quick look underneath the bonnet, I'll show you the main points you want to know. So first of all, you've got your chassis number in your windscreen there. And you've got your chassis number on your weight plate. Go off the Benamar plate, so this is three and a half ton. You can tow two ton behind you. So this is your train weight, so motorhome and trailer can't exceed five. 1500 kilograms which is five and a half ton and then this is the plate from when it's been a chassis car which you just ignore because that weight's different say there it's saying 3650 it's not three and a half ton you've got your paint code should you need any white paint and then you've got your various liquids so you've got your screen wash in the corner which is the main one you're going to need you remove these clips here and this panel lifts off to fill your power steering fluid and radiator fluid and you do have your brake fluid there as well. You've got your oil filler and your dipstick there. And then if you did need to jump start the vehicle, give or receive one, you'd put your you'd earth with your black clip on here. And if you just put your key in there and just lift up, you'd put your red positive onto this contact here. So once inside the vehicle, this is your main control panel above the habitation door. So you've got your on off, which either does 12 volt if you aren't hooked up, but if you are hooked up, you'll get this little green light here telling you you're hooked up, which gives you 240 volt. And then you can turn on and off the 12 volt, which just your lighting and so on. You've got your pump there, so should you have sufficient water in, you can put your pump in, pump on, should I say, and then you can open the taps and you water will work and then next what you do have your light outside the vehicle so this is your awning light and then the buttons on the side corresponds with the buttons on the bottom so you've got a trailer which is your leisure battery reading you've got a chassis cab which is the fate battery reading you've got water so this is your fresh water reading here and then when this goes down to the bottom one that means your waste is full you can also dim and brighten this control panel by pressing and holding like so, it's going up and down. To lock the door in an evening you just push this chrome catch in and that, that locks the door but also on the door you do have a black outline and a full fly screen. Then in the washroom area to operate the toilet You'd press the blue button on the back, which gives you your flush there. 
flush the toilet first then what you want to do is open the blade like I said out from outside if the blade is open the cassette won't come out so you'd slide it to the right open the blade which allows the liquid to dispose into the cassette use the toilet with the blade open flush and then close the blade to seal the cassette obviously sealing it means that you can get it out and always shut it after use to keep the smells at bay got your light switch here toilet cabinet another window which opens the same as the kitchen with a blackout blind and a fly screen operate this skylight you'll just push in and you can either open it one end open and one end closed depending on the wind for ventilation or you can push both and have both open together if it's a nice day and you want some nice ventilation you do have a fly screen and a blackout blind on there as well toilet cabinet underneath your sink and then you put your shower so your shower screen is secured with a tie back when traveling and then what you want to do is when you are winterizing the vehicle and you are draining the fresh waste and boiler you'll also want to take the shower head off and allow this shower hose which is lying up here to lie in the shower tray as you can see it's going to loop in any water will lie in there leave all the taps open throughout the vehicle when you winterize as well you've also got a towel rail from the ceiling which is great if you've been out with the dog so you've been caught in the rain you hang your coats in here shut the door put the heating on this will get lovely and warm in here as it's the smallest part of the vehicle and this just shows the infill cushions in place when the bed and the table is down to create the bed so you've got your infill cushion which is in your wardrobe your backrest from here and then obviously your board that just goes here on the two wooden slats there which houses the board in place and obviously your, your table is electric so you just got the switch here and you can push it up and down so you push it down and push it into, into the space You can move the table about by pushing this button here so you, so you pinch, obviously you can push it in the front, pull it back and position it where you want it to be positioned. And then operate your drop down bed above, as this is a four berth, you've got the button there so you just press and hold, bring the bed down. You can of course bring the bed further down should you the table down so you can stop it at any height you want put the ladder on use it as a four berth as the double underneath and double above the ladder is out the back there and then you do have the nets down the side which clip on to the top there so if you do have small children they don't roll out you've also got a light so you can turn the light on and off by just touching the end and you can still use the, t the TV and heating controls when the bed's down as well so once I put the bed up There you are, so you, you need to lift it up and then you can slide the telly back it out. Connect your telly to here and you can also loosen this off, slide it down or slide it up to what height you want your telly at. 
Above you do have a three pin plug, a 240 three pin plug, 12 volt and a aerial point there as well. So should you want access to the main tank, it's underneath the base of your forward facing rear seat belts. And then should you want access in, if you remove the cover like so, this is your fresh water, so you can clean it out if you wish in here. You've also got your water pump in there as well. At the front, under here, this is where you'll find your boiler drain down. So your boiler is under here, your drain down is just at the back, so if I just lift this out, This section does fall down as well by pulling the two levers here, so one and two. Which gives extra foot space for the passenger closest to the window. And then just underneath this pipe here, you'll see your Truma cross control. So when the diamond is front to back of the vehicle and the little nib is in, and the button at the bottom is in as well. This is holding water. So this is an anti-frost and at three degrees it will drop the water automatically. But don't rely on it because if it should fail and be a faulty part or ever become faulty, you're then still liable for water damage to the vehicle. It isn't covered under any warranties as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle off so what you need to do is you need to turn the diamond the nib pops out the button pops out and you'll hear the water draining directly underneath the chassis to stop what you need to do is turn it push the button in at the bottom you see the little blue button at the very bottom and turn it back front to back instead of across the vehicle and this will then start holding water again This is to demonstrate your hot water is getting to temperature there. So now in the cab, I'll go through your basic cab controls. So you've got your handbrake to your right. You've got your Remus cab blinds with your pinch. Slide along, always let this end lead. Don't turn it like that. Push it like this. On both passenger and driver's side doors. Electric windows and electric mirror adjustments, which are just the top and the blind spot. And then on here, you've got your headlight adjustment and your rear fogs. Trip computer on the end of the wiper stalk, which goes through this screen here. It'll tell you your miles per gallon, your range, um, your traveling times, and so on. And then you do have your lights, but on this model, they are automatic. So just put them on automatic and leave them. Steering wheel controls, so you've got answer and decline calls. This will scroll through your contacts or radio tra channels or tracks. Mute, volume and voice command. And then on here you have got up for cruise control, which you get the little light on in here, the green light off. And then you have speed limiter. So if you want to put this cruise control on, what you need to do is you need to get the speed first, turn it on and then push it up and that'll save it and it will put the cruise control on. Should you have to brake for any reason, you can press cancel or resume. Obviously if you've braked, it will resume it. If you need to turn it off for any reason, you can just press cancel and then you can resume it at a later date. This one is fitted with the Comfortmatic gearbox. So you've got neutral up here, all the way down to reverse, which brings on your rear view camera and you'll also see in the bottom corner here what gear you're in. Or you can go over, you'll go one, which is manual, tap again, and it goes to auto one. And when parking it, you can leave it in gear and just put the handbrake on. Because there's no park with this, so you do need to use the handbrake. Or you can just leave it in gear, it's up to you, but it's better to use the handbrake. Traction control, hill descent control with it being an automatic. This turns off the traction hazards. Locks the doors, locks your cab, heated door mirrors for when they're wet or frozen, a USB for charging purposes and a 12 volt. The USB down here is for the head unit which I'll get onto in a second for streaming so you can connect your phone there. 
you put the heater temperature and then your fan speed obviously aircon in the middle there distribution so this is where you want the air to go to face feet screen and then either recirculating air within the motorhome or bringing fresh air in to the head unit this is a standard fiat head unit so you turn on or off you've got your radio which is fm am and dab so you can choose which one you want so sometimes you can fit find dab out anywhere sometimes you can't you have to switch over to fm or you can go to media which is either a cd bluetooth audio or usb you've got your navigation which is a tom tom navigation so with home it'll probably ask you if you want to set your home address don't set your exact home address because if someone steals your motor home they know where you live put the street or a couple of streets away or the local town just somewhere that you can navigate yourself to and then you know where to go from there you've got home the phone there so with the phone you can connect your through bluetooth so you go to settings add phone and find go to your settings on your phone and find you connect make sure the pins match press pair on the head unit press pair on the phone then it will ask you if you want to sync your contacts press allow and then whoever rings you will come up on the head unit and then if you go into more you can go to clock compass and trip so you can see your trip computer on here as well as in the middle screen there and then to black the whole windscreen out you do have Remus car blinds on the front so again you'd pinch slide them round so they just pop out there and they are just magnetic they are just magnetic there so what I'd advise is if it's going to be windy I'd put an elastic band around the handles when they're together in the windscreen and to turn your seats you just pull here and spin round should it get stuck you just pull your seat forward and turn into the rear of the motorhome like so this now brings us to the end of the handover demonstration on the Benamar Milo 202 should you have any questions feel free to contact our sales department on 01207 272 or email us at sales at Time Valley Motorhomes. Thank you for watching this handover video.